Welcome back drawers. Uh, this is part two of our head drawing or portrait drawing uh, section. Uh, today we are going to dig in a little bit deeper to the, uh, the specific propor proportions of the face. Um, I will cover a little bit of features right? and uh, we will conclude by doing a, uh, um, a demonstration of uh, four small uh, quick studies of, uh, of, of, of the head. Um, uh, once again, Chandra is with us. Right, she will be modeling uh, um, again and uh, going over some stuff. All right, so, all right, so let's jump right in. <clears throat> all right, so uh, we need to start with another head. So just like our previous lessons, right, we're going to start with a, a cranial feature. Right? And to that, we are going to add a jaw form. Right? As always, we got to have a little mark in there. And we'll do a neck here. Just to kind of give a little bit of sort of context, right, like that. And then we'll draw another one right here, so we can. Same process always. Right? So a little bit of the sort of the V of the neck here. Okay, start with the center line, obviously this one, the center line is over here, and then our halfway line goes like this, halfway. Okay. So, <clears throat> this was our head construction. This was our, 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 our overall head construction, right? and so let's talk about the face. Right? The face is, uh, so our head is from here to here, right? it's from the top to end. Our, our face is from the bottom of our chin to approximately where our hairline would be. Right? This, can, this can vary a little bit. Right? Um, what we're going to be talking about is, uh, is the proportions of the face. Right? What's, what's really uh, great about looking at these things is that the overall proportions of the face are the same for everybody. Right? It doesn't matter where um, your, uh, your parents or your ancestors are from, uh, whether it's Central Africa or uh, Northern Europe uh, or anywhere in between. Right? Um, we all have the same basic uh, breakdown of our of our facial features, right? and the first one that we're going to look at is is the thirds, right? The rule sometimes it's called the rule of thirds, right? The distance from the bottom of your chin to the bottom of your septum or the bottom of your nose, right? The distance from the bottom of your nose to the top of your glabella or sometimes called the keystone, right, is your nose, and then the distance from the top of the glabella to that hairline, right? These are thirds, right? So if we say that uh, our hairline is about here, right? So here is the head. This is the human head right here. Right? And remember this was half. That's the distance from here to here. Right? That's so that's half of that. Right? And then our face sits about here. Right? So, uh, so when we divide that face up uh, into those thirds, right, uh, each one of those thirds is approximately the same size, right? but they're not exact. Right? So uh, it, just in the same way that um, if you're reading a book and the book has three parts, each, each part is not 333 pages long. Right? The difference is that part one might be a little bit longer than part two and part three might be uh, a little bit shorter than part two. Right? Uh, and and those, those individual sort of variations are what make our face unique. Right? So uh, it's always important to remember that we are more similar than dissimilar. Right? And so we have things that are in common and the drawer, when setting up this, uh, this process, wants to look at the things that are more similar uh, and, and, then, and then gradually look for the unique and individual variations. Right? So when we're looking at this, right, the distance from here to here and here to here and here to here, each one might be a little bit more or less than the other one. Right? So for me, when I draw, I always like to start with, uh, with the nose. Right? I just always draw the nose first. Right? So, so you can see I have these three thirds, one, two, three, 
right? So we have one, two, three, and they're about the same, right? So because I'm working on um, an abstraction here, right, I'm going to make them all the same first, right? And we might then adjust that, right? So there's our little kind of labella going back that way. Right? Our nose kind of comes down, and sometimes has a little bit of a sort of crook there. Right? That may be a little too over exaggerated there, Eric. Sides here, this one here. This is a generic sort of nose right there. And so, and so there's our nose, so that's our first third. Right. For me, then, I usually identify uh, the bottom section next. Right. So our lips, and we're going to go something like this, something like this, and something like this this. Now in that bottom section, right, uh, in that bottom section, uh, the mouth sits two-thirds of the way up. Right? So a lot of times people think that the mouth, your mouth, sits right in the middle of that bottom third, right? but it doesn't, and that'll make your chin look too small. So the distance from the bottom of the septum to the um, the separation of the lips is about one third, right? and then the uh, the bot to the bottom lip, right? right about here, is the second third, and then this chin feature. Right? The third. So this is then divided here. Right? So this distance is approximately a third, right? and then this distance is approximately uh, three-thirds. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, this separation in between, this sometimes falls right on the eye line, but not always. I really need to see you get above. Mm -hmm. And then the distance from the top of that keystone. And th the top of that keystone is, is kind of difficult to measure. Right? A lot of times uh, on, a, on a male head, uh, what you'll see is, is a more sharp line here. Right? And uh, because uh, um, the, the brow ridge tends to be a little bit more robust on the male figure, right? so you'll get more of an angle here. And so a lot of times you'll pick up a little bit of a shadow, uh, you know, uh, um, some kind of terminator line uh, there to allow you to see that. Um, on, a, on a female forehead, uh, that tends to be a little bit smoother. So sometimes it's a little bit harder to see. But when you're doing your portraits, um, it's important that you just acknowledge where you're taking that measurement to. Right? So it's, 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 it's your drawing. Right? So then this one is the next third, right? and then this one is that next third. Right? So for me, and you'll see when I do the demonstration, um, what I would do is I would just measure it. I would say that maybe um, this section is a little bit larger than this section. Right? That helps me kind of plot some of those things out. All right? um, so we'll take a real quick look at, um, oh, I did do the lips over here. Let's look at that lip line here. Uh, when we draw lips, the lips are uh, um, have a, a rule of three and two. So the top section of the lip right, is comprised of, of three sections, right? The, the middle section, which is uh, um, in, in the center here, and then the two side sections, right? So uh, that gives us a little sort of V shape here, right? And then the lip comes over straight, right? And then a little bit in the crease here. And so then the top lip sits something like this. The bottom section is really comprised of two sort of sections down here. Right? So then the lip kind of comes up a little bit here and there. And that's sort of how we get sort of that lip shape there. Right? Because this one is Remember, this is just an abstraction, right? So this is just the abstraction that we're kind of working on here. Right? So the eyes, right? We're gonna uh, we're gonna jump to the eyes. Uh, uh, maybe maybe I'll do the ears next because I want to do the eyes last. Right? If your ears tend to relate to the middle section, right? So if your ears feel like they sit a little high, it's because they would they're they're in relationship, right? So one of the things that's important about all of these various features is they're the features and the proportional 
relationships that we're talking about are all in relationship to each other, not other people's. Right? So if you feel uh, or that uh, an individual or yourself, uh, if you feel like your ears are large, they're not large in comparison to my ears or Chandra's ears. Right? You have no idea how, how big uh, our ears are. They're in relationship to your facial features. So somebody whose ears appear to be small, they might be small in comparison to their own nose, not somebody else's nose. Right? So in general, we compare the size of the nose to the ear, and that band sort of wraps around. So you're going the placement of your ear is going to sit somewhere back here. Jaw up a little bit. And your ear needs to sit, right? So it's going to sit somewhere up here. It's going to be a shape that's going to look something like this: up and over and then around. This feature, right? We would compare that to the nose. It should be a little bit lower than that. And then that kind of will come up and over and around like this and give us our lobe here. And then there's a you know, kind of shape of the antihelix in here, which looks usually something like this. And that gives us a kind of quick rendering of an ear right there. And then, like I said, the jaw. I have to move that jaw in a little bit because the jaw needs to sit in front of, uh, of the ear. If, you're, if your jaw didn't sat behind your ear when you chewed, um, it would mess with your ear, but your jaw moves independently of that. Mm -hmm. So then over here, right, I'm going to sort of stick the ear kind of coming out something like this, and then bring that form down here, something like this. All right, uh, last part that we want to go over is going to be the eyes. All right, so the eyes, uh, notice how um, I decided to do the ears before doing the eyes because I think that the eyes should be last uh, in terms of the arrangement of doing features. Now you can do things in any sort of order that you want and people work in a variety of different ways, but um, for me, I find that most of the time students jump to the eyes far too quickly before establishing um, the rest of the sort of the, the shapes that kind of go in there, right? So, um, you know, we want to make sure that we have, um, you know, a proper kind of eye socket, right? So that, and that kind of goes into that sort of space here. Right? So these are sort of sunglasses type sort of things. You get that sort of that placement in the right place and then all of those things are in the right area. So see how I'm using this brow line across right, to uh, kind of you know, get that in sort of the right sort of place here. Um, so for the eyes, as a general rule, and if we're looking at a three-quarter angle, this is you're going to just kind of have to do this from observation. And as a general rule, um, the the inside corner of the eyes sits in relationship to the nose. All right. So again, if somebody's eyes feel like they're close together, uh, that could mean that they are smaller than the width of their nose. If somebody's nose feels wide, it could feel wider than that, and that's how we would sort of see that. But we see this distance from here to here in relationship to this. Right, so the general abstraction is that it comes straight up. Right, so that you just put that on that halfway line. Right, you can see how we have that line that's going across, and if we're comfortable in that, right, that's going to allow us to place that. Right, and then the outer corner of the eye uh, is 
the same distance as the distance of this. So sometimes they call this the, the rule of five, right? So when you look directly at a face, right, it, it goes one, two, three, four, five, right? Five, five sections in that, right? So uh, as a general rule, you, we can say that that would be about here. We have to see how I'm sort of like putting them all kind of together right, in order to set where the two corners of the eye sit. Mm -hmm. I feel like those are a little bit too wide. Right? So maybe my nose is a little bit too wide. So I'm going to move those in a little bit. Move that a little bit sort of small there and there. And we're doing that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So similar to the lips, which have a pattern of one, two, three. Right? The eyes also have a pattern of one, two, three on the top and two on the bottom. Right? So when we make the eye, right, we want to start with this section going up here, over here, and down here. And then on the bottom, there's only one here like this and one like this. And that gives us that general sort of shape of the eye as looking something like that. This is a very sort of abstract rendering of an eye. People sit like this. Most of the time, right, this is a little bit sort of higher, and that gives us an eye, right? Same thing on the other side. One, two, three, one, two. And that allows us to see those eyes as being um, being separate. So you can always tell the difference between the right eye and the left eye. Right around there. And bring that up. Something like that. And then the eye kind of shape something like that. Mm -hmm. When we're looking at it on the side, okay. on the side, <coughs> there is, uh, and so on the side, uh, it's, it's important to make sure that there's this line that goes like this, right? So when we have it, we'll see up one. Something like this, and then that one comes down, something like that. And the lid in the front, right? your lid in the front needs to sit farther forward than the lid on the bottom. Right, so that lid on the on the on the the way it comes down, the the bottom lid is the farthest back, the top lid is the is farther forward, and then the brow needs to be farther forward than that. Right? We're, we're designed that way so that if you hit this part of your eye, you don't damage your eye. Your eye doesn't want to bulge out right? uh, um, as we sort of go up. So, Right, so there are our, our overall proportions of our uh, of our face. Oh, uh, let me go over the, the hairline really quick. Right, so uh, and the hairline is going to be different. This is a great place where you know for you know for you to be sort of observing. But in general, right, people have something that looks kind of like a sideburn right here. Right, and then this comes. Right, you notice how it kind of picks up that temporal line right there. Right? So you get something that kind of sits something like this. Right? So Boom. 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 Like that. All right. Okay. So uh, um, that's just generic. All right. We're gonna take a quick break. I'm gonna get a clean piece of paper, and we're going to put some of this to practice looking at Chandra. So uh, now we're going to uh, do a series of vignettes. Uh, I'm gonna do. Uh, I've got a clean piece of paper here. I'm gonna do four 
uh, different versions of this. Um, and each one will be a little bit different and uh, we'll go through the process. Right? And they're, they're meant to be quick. Uh, um, these would normally be uh, five minute drawings and what I might do in a, um, a 20 minute model session. Uh, but because I'm talking through it, uh, they tend to go a little bit slower. Right? So uh, maybe you know, 10 or 15 minutes because of the talking part uh, through them. Right? But they're, they're, they're meant to be kind of quick studies. Right? This, is not the long, uh, um, this is not the long portrait drawing. Right? This is to sort of, um, uh, as I talked before, about kind of building up practice, right? The last time we did um, a set of 100 of the little tiny ones, just really kind of quick, because we want to get that many drawings under our belt. So this is, um, you know, maybe if you were doing a, um, a portrait day with a model, you might have a three-hour session. This might be a 20-minute block, right, where you're going to just do four head vignettes, just to kind of sort of, you know, warm up a little bit. All right, but we're going to go through it kind of, kind of slowly. So, all right, so here is our, our first uh, pose right here. So, you know, again, I'm gonna, I got I to look, right, and I got I to analyze, right? I'm looking at that the cranial mass is always going to be a kind of circle. And I'm going to put that first one kind of right here. Right. It's sort of circular form. I'm already thinking, though, about that tilt, right? So, I'm going to plot out that angle. You know, maybe I'm going to use my, my knitting needle here, right? So I can do that and sort of look at the face angle, kind of go something like this. And these, I'm going to avoid exaggerating too much. Um, you know, I have a tendency to exaggerate a little bit. Yeah, but I'm going to put that center line on so I can get that. And that tells me my, uh, my, my center line needs to be a little bit farther over. Right? So I'm going to move that. That that's more important than anything, sort of getting that sort of section. Right? And, then, and then I'm going to draw that jaw form. Right? So I might hold my knitting needle up and it kind of goes kind of straight. And so that jaw is going to come down like this. And so it's not just a generic quick thing. You, know, you don't want to be sort of, well, I got to put a jaw form on there because Eric said put a jaw form on there. You want to be looking at it. Right? I see the cheek comes out a little bit here. Right? And it comes down a little bit like this. And maybe it's a little bit rounder here. Right? I'm being very light and loose initially right? as I sort of, kind of set this stuff up. Right? Right, next, I want my halfway line. I'm going to use my needle to sort of do it. And, and I want to I analyze this, right? Where is it? Um, it's almost flat, but it kind of has a tiny bit of kind of curvature. And so, and so that's going to allow it to kind of round around my head, something like this. And I can even take a sort of quick measure right, to see that it's less than half, right? Because I know if it's I know if it's a bit of a smile shape like this, it's going to be less than half, right? And that's less than half. And so that kind of comes around something like this, right? And then to kind of sort of shoulder starts about in half of it, halfway through the head, kind of about here, right? And then the shoulder sits kind of even with the chin. So it's going to allow me to get my shoulder like this. Right? And then the back of the head and the arm is going to come out as far as about here. Right? And I don't want to go too much further in here because I don't want to kind of mess with the rest of that space. But that gives me a little bit of that kind of that shoulder shape there. Right? Coming down, uh, I see the neck right, coming a little bit out of the chin here. Right? And then I get a little bit of the back of the neck kind of here. And I apologize if it's a little, it might, I, I, I hope it's pretty close to what you're seeing on the camera. Um, it might be a smidgey bit different because I can't put the camera exactly in the same place as I'm seeing it because um, if I were to do that, then um, I wouldn't be able to see it. <laughs> I think my cranial mass, I'm, gonna, I'm, yeah, I'm trying to go slow here. I think my cranial mass is a little bit too big. Right? Just because I made that initial circular form in order to get started doesn't mean I can't shave that down. Right? And I feel like now she has a little bit too much kind of neck here. And so, and so I'm kind of pairing those kind of things together. All right, we'll look a little bit at our hairline here. Uh, you know, how, how far down is that? I think that's kind of hard to say, but I'm, I'm looking at it and observing it. And I think that our hairline sits kind of about kind of here. Right? That's going to help me a little bit to get that sort of like my pie plate shape, which goes something like this. 
Jawline, right? So on Chandra, you can see sort of she, you know, she has these high cheekbones, but they kind of they kind of round a little bit, but still that shape right, is coming something like this, right, and then coming down here. And that helps me kind of get a little bit better sort of sense of that jaw form right there. And I'm bring this in a smidge a bit more. Right? And my pie plate, I'm keeping a little smidge of it on this side. It probably needs to be trimmed a little bit there. Okay? I'm going to give it a little bit of the roundness of my forehead kind of here, and making sure that that's kind of centered. And then we can see a little bit of that hourglass shape that's sort of formed here. That's going to help us to get our, our eye next. Okay? All right, so there's our, uh, our uh, what we did last week. Right, so now I'm going to start adding some of those features. Right? So um, I know that, uh, that, that my my glabella, which is the top of my nose. I'm always going to start with my nose. Right? I, I, I like to do that. That's going to sit kind of about here. Right? And if I measure that on her, right, the nose section is a little bit bigger than her than her forehead section. Right? So that's going to bring that nose kind of maybe down around there. Right? So now, uh, because uh, I want to I want to draw that section in. Right, the nose does not sit right on the uh, the center line, right? Because it's it's raised up a little bit. So I'm going to go over a little bit here. Right, I'm going to use my knitting needle to get a little bit of a measurement there, right, and that's going to come down something like this. Right, the ball of the front of the nose is a circle like this. Right, and I'm only catching a little bit of the nostril on that other side, right, and then the nostril on this side. I'm just going to sit something like this. Up then, right, the keystone, I can see that keystone feature, it kind of comes up in a little shape like this, and that gives us sort of the rest of the nose, and I'm even going to move that up a little bit, right, and then that's going to go into our eye socket over here, and again, I can kind of measure that, she has very sort of distinct eyebrows, they kind of go up, and they sit right on the top of that form, right? and then come down something like this. And then over on the other side, and then we go up a little bit like this. And so this is an overall kind of shape that goes like this. And then the eyebrow is going to come up a little bit right? and then come down something like that. So because uh, I brought the nose out a little bit, the center line has of my the front section has moved over. I don't know if I mentioned this before, uh, but uh, the mouth section, this lower section, sits farther forward than these other sections, right? So if we're drawing that center line, we're looking at it, that means that that center line needs to be a little bit more over in this sort of direction here, right? So, right? The mouth is about a third, right? the division between it is about a third uh, of the way down here. Mm -hmm. And so the Upper lip is going to go up and over. And we're going to see it kind of in relationship to the nose. That bottom is going to sit about here. Right? So a little sort of to here, and over and down. seeing them in relationship to where the nose is. And so right, there's kind of a straight line between these three points. So I'm going to put that there, make sure that shape comes around so I can get the other side to sit the right way. Mm -hmm. And depending on how she's sort of looking at any one of the time, her eye is kind of coming down something like this. And then kind of up here. Other eye in, 
Now these are, remember, these are all just the structural parts of this, right? So that value is going to sit about here, right? And the way I'm seeing it, it goes up and down and around and goes down and goes around like this. That ear comes from that high point of the eyebrow. It's going to come back and sit about here. And then the bottom one, from the nose to about here. And so there's that ear. I mean, I'm going to take a quick comparative measurement to get that sort of the width of that. Smidge of it kind of coming around here. A little sort of fat sort of section of hair here. Here comes up, right? and sort of like Bucky sort of points out, sitting around here, goes to about here, and then coming down. You can see there's a little kind of bit of kind of curvature that kind of comes in, something like that. And then this little sort of section kind of comes over, and kind of wraps a little bit around sort of the back there. Okay. And go back into the Go and add in a little bit of light now. Right now we've got most of the structures going in. Right? I like to squint my eyes a little bit. Right? This is all kind of in darkness here. Right? This comes down and wraps sort of around here. And then comes down something like this.
first one. Set the pose and uh, and I'll do another one. Okay, uh, so here we are. We're gonna do our second pose. All right, so uh, she's looking up in this direction. So I think that that one kind of fits nicely because this one's a little bit more elevated. I think I'm gonna lift it up a little bit and sort of place it in this sort of spot here. I'm gonna start with that same kind of cranial mass right on this like this. All right. Um, this pose, right again, that center line comes down in this direction, right? So maybe I'll use my knitting needle to kind of check that center line going in this direction. Right? So that, remember that center line has to kind of wrap sort of around here. Right? It's a little bit more towards my right than my left. Right? Then her, her jaw form is going to come something like this. Right? And this one, because the chin is up, we're seeing a little bit of the bottom, so that jaw form has a slightly different shape. And the back of that jaw is coming almost to the far left of her sort of head, right? So I get this jaw shape that looks really kind of more like this. Right? I'm kind of allow that to come right into that neck. Right? So then this is actually going to sort of pull a little bit kind of more forward. Remember, I can, I'm going to adjust the size of some of these things as I'm sort of going along. And a couple extra lines don't matter, you know, so I'm going to put some kind of backdrop in there anyhow. Right? <clears throat> right? That, uh, because, uh, she's, uh, because she's looking up, right, so that eye line has gone higher than halfway, right? so it's going to come something like this. So that's going to give me that kind of shape like that. The pit of her neck sits kind of about here. And this part of her neck over here, this is her jaw, coming up like that. And this part of the neck is sitting something like that. Jaw kind of comes down a little bit here like this, and I'm getting that little bit of neck over here. And a little bit of shoulder that's kind of popping out kind of over here. That shoulder is higher than this one, right? and so uh, as our neck muscles kind of come down, then we're going to sit something like that. Mm -hmm. right, so there's that sort of overall kind of shape. And I think I'm going to actually bring this down just a little bit. Get some of that fleece to come like that. I'm going to sit something like here. I'm just going to kind of go around the ear. Okay, something like that. Sort of dome on the front section. And then my cheeks are coming something like this. Okay. okay, so that gives me sort of those forms there. being able to just sort of see this, right? Right now, we're not, we're not trying to do a portrait of her. What we're trying to do is we're trying to capture the gesture of her head, right? We're trying to capture the, 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 the direction that she's looking, right? The movement of the head, right? That's what we're going for. And we're going to build all those things uh, later on. You know, as portraits go on, you know, they, they look more and more uh, like, that, that, like the person, right? But right now, we're just looking at the abstraction. Okay, so I'm going to try to find where that nose is. There, and then we should see it over. So her nose is kind of sitting kind of about here. It's off to one side, so it's going sort of this direction here. And this little circular section here. And in this, right, we're seeing the nostrils underneath. So you got the wings of the nose, something like this, right? and this one sits sort of over here. So you're seeing underneath the nose. Right? That'll give us that little bit of sort of 
built from there, so it's sticking to sort of something like that. Right? That nose will then make that a little bit sort of wider. And this is still just the, the structures of the nose, right? Before we put any kind of light on it. So, uh, this is going to actually become more of the sort of the top of the brow. And the eyes are actually kind of a little bit more like this here. Right? So, I'm going to use the edge of that nose to kind of come up and. Oh, and I'm going to follow the same system I was doing before. And so, we're going to draw both the lips here. Okay, so, we draw that bottom section as a little bit of a V shape. Right? And you can see as it sort of comes over. Uh, because we're looking down uh, or looking up at it, right? Kind of comes down B over, right? and it comes back sort of something like this. And we get the little sort of nugget on the side. Pop that a bit off that nose. And then the lip probably comes up something like this. Shape is wrapping around something like this. And then we get that bottom lip shape that says something like this. Mm -hmm. And this is my chin here. And so So let's go up and uh, sort of pick the eye sections here. Right, so uh, now I'm going to. Oh, wait, no, I'm, yeah, I'll, I'll do the. Because I'm going to plop the ears there. Okay, so the corner of one eye sits about here. The corner of the other eye sits kind of about here. section, I'm going to pop that kind of just loosely kind of based on over there. one going over uh, because of the way that she's looking it's kind of pulling that eye section kind of over something like this Here, 
this. And I'll come over. I'm going to catch a little bit of the ear on this one. Right? So the, the ears actually relate to each other, right? So they, they're kind of coming up and over. So I've got one little bit of ear that's sticking out over here. And the other one right, wraps this way, right? I'm going to use a, um, an angle from the bottom of the nose. See that that sits about here. And then the other one I'm going to go off the top of the eye. Um, it sits back here and a little bit in sort of perspective. I'm going to take an overall width measurement from the nose and I'm going to kind of place that just to make sure. Sort of points out. So at, at, at the beginning of the year, the edge, right? So this is the little sort of tragus feature that we talked about. And this goes up, right? around, and then wraps sort of down. So I have this. So let's go over and put our hairline on here. So right, because this one's tone here, right, following along, right here, we're really getting a good sort of view of the, uh, the, the dome shape, right, so here, a core shot comes something like this, comes over here, a little bit of something.
right, we'll call that one there. All right, that one was kind of fun. Back, we're gonna do a, a couple more of these and finish this up. I'm gonna try actually to draw a little bit faster. So, um, uh, yeah, let's, let's, let's get into it. All right, All right. new pose, All right, looking down, uh, you know, kind of keeping with where this is going. You know, this one's gonna fit nicely kind of in here. Uh, I'm gonna pull it in just a little bit so it's not so lined up. So I'm gonna kind of go a little bit more here. And so my, my placement really is sort of, you know, I'm just sort of thinking about the overall. So that kind of cranial mass. And I'm making these heads kind of all about the same size. This is just to get all that sort of stuff on there so I can make those adjustments. The sooner I can start to see the drawing, the better it's going to be.
Let's see another one. Mm -hmm. All right, so as we're starting this uh, this next one here, right, to kind of I'm kind of planning a little bit in terms of my, my, my sort of four heads that I said I would draw. And so I want to I want to make sure that I don't you know, kind of lose kind of too much of this kind of nice edge that I have here. And so I'll bring this down like this. And I'll bring that jaw form is going to sort of tuck in to here a little bit. And so it's going to bring my sort of center line in like this. And I think that I think the artist is always designed. Always kind of designing, right? no matter no matter what. And so you have to be kind of you know, planning all the time. So that uh, I, have, I have my center line sort of like this. I don't like that. Is it, is it tucking in deep enough? I'm not, I'm not really sure. I'm going to go like that. Mm -hmm. My line is it's pretty low. Right? So if I measure that, um, it's, it's almost 25%. A quarter of the way down. Right? So I'm going to put that way down here. So it's like one, two, that little So then that, the nose is going to sit inside of this form, right? So and this one's a little bit sort of kind of tricky trying to sort of figure out where that, that nose is going to sit. My whole face, my whole face is a little bit about halfway. Right? So that's about there. So my whole face sits something like this, right? The high plate then is going to, right, if that whole face is there, right on this one, and because it's a, you know, we have this sort of, you know, this kind of challenging angle here, I'm going to put this sort of round form on there first. And that's going to help me put, my, my pie plate is going to need to come up to about here. All right, it's going to come something like that. Right, so maybe a little bit more like that. Right, so, all right. Be looking at that and trying to figure that out. Right? Sort of all this is kind of like head here. Right? So my nose form is going to sit something like this. Adjust everything. Everything can be adjusted. So I'm seeing this as a sort of primitive shape. And I said the nose sort of sits something like this, like this, and like this. And because of the way that, that my center line is now, my center line, I want to pull some of that because it's kind of a little distracting.
right, I'm gonna call it there. All right, uh, so um, your assignment for this week uh, is to do a set of four different heads. Right? I think that uh, um, considering how we've been working, uh, I think that the pausing the television model is probably going to be the best for this. You might choose someone that you like. Uh, in an ideal situation, it would be great if you could get somebody to sit for you, um, although that frequently is not going to be able to happen in your homes. All right, so um, unless, as I said in the previous video, unless that person is going to really take your project serious and be able to sit for you for um, you know, 20 or 30 minutes at a time, um, I'd rather just have you working from, uh, from something off the TV. Uh, as you can see, um, when I was setting up uh, the poses with Chandra, um, I would have her move and I would ask her to do a little bit more of, of this or this or this. Um, uh, if you're working uh, with, a, with a remote on your television, that might be easy because you can find one character or one person right, and, and just draw them over and over. Uh, I am really more interested in you kind of capturing the overall sort of feeling of the, the figures than you know, um, doing some character type. So just find a regular person, right? Not, um, not, not somebody particularly famous or, or somebody that has a bunch of extra accoutrements or a funny hat or something like that. You know, just, a, just a regular person, All right? I um, uh, look forward to seeing these next week and uh, we'll talk then, thanks.